Fallout's isometric perspective is not for everyone, and considering how archaic some of the inventory system is and navigating through the world, a lot of people won't like the original Fallout games, but that's where this ultimate modding guide comes in. Welcome to the ultimate modding guide series, a guide helping siphon through the best mods on the internet to give you an even better Brahmin experience. And with these tips, I guarantee your Fallout experience will be nothing short of legendary. This video will be separated in Fallout 1 and 2. So look at the time cards on the bottom to see what fits your needs. Let's start out with Fallout 1. You always have to have the essential improvements. And for this, I would recommend installing the latest patch. If you're running copies like Steam or GOG, you don't need to worry about this. But if you're running, say, the physical copy, you need to have the patch in order for it to be compatible with other versions. And you could actually switch the save vice versa. I'll, I'll talk about that later. The next one comes standard with all digital copies of Fallout, which is the Fallout High Resolution Mod. What's nice about this is that it actually lets you scale the original 480p, which honestly cannot be scaled even if you have the original files, and it scales it to whatever perspective you have do 4K ultra wide, which is what my monitor has right here. And I've seen a lot of people play Fallout in its native 1X scaling, but this mod has a 2X scaling. And why is this important? It's gonna double the 480p resolution. So any resolutions that's higher than 1280 by 1024 makes it significantly easier to play and look at your main character through the original perspective. I actually had difficult not only seeing gameplay videos online, but also playing it myself without the 2X scaling. And once I enabled that, my experience was pretty much that akin to the original Fallout experience on retro consoles. Now, there are other mods such as uh, Fallout Fix It, which actually has improvements, but it's known to be outdated and buggy. And there are ways to actually port Fallout 1 into the Fallout 2 experience, but those have also been reported buggy. so. That's why they're not included here. Moving on to Fallout 2, you're gonna be having almost the same experience, but we're gonna be adding some more steps. Like I mentioned, you're gonna be installing the latest 1.02 patch if you have a physical copy, but if you have Steam, GOG, or any other digital distribution for Fallout 1, you're fine. You also have the same exact high resolution that you did before, and to recap that, it properly scales your 1x scaling of the 480p perspective into whatever monitor resolution you like. And if it's way too small to be able to see, it also has a 2x scaling to scale to whatever monitor resolution that you have. It's a really nice addition to have, and that's what I would obviously recommend for that. Okay, this is where things are gonna deviate pretty differently. Fallout 2 has a ton of mods, more than the first one, just because the first one's buggy, but I'm digressing. The Fallout 2 Restoration Project. It's a compilation of many different mods, unofficial patches, and other fixes that compile themselves together and just installs it just like that. You have two flavors if you want this. You have an EXE that installs directly into the directory of Fallout 2 which is definitely recommended for, you know, 64-bit systems or anything like that. But they also have a manual install, which I think works great for 32-bit systems. I'm actually running Fallout 2 on my original Windows XP retro computer. I couldn't use the EXE because that's more akin to 64-bit systems, but with the manual installation, it works great for 32. And I've been having no problem installing this. But what's included in this mod collection? It does install the Fallout unofficial patch, which is recommended for fixing bugs, little fixes, and things that need to be fixed that Interplay hasn't fixed. So this is why it's recommended. Remember that if you are using this, you have to use the original 1.02 patch and you cannot use the unofficial patch in conjunction with the project restoration, which makes sense because they both have the same thing, so don't make conflicts there. There's also a music quality mod that also bumps the 22 megahertz that's on the CD to 44.1, which is a significantly better sound experience, but if you want to go higher, you can. You can go completely lossless, which is my preferred way of listening to Fallout 2, and you have it in couple of flavors actually. You can have in a wave pack, you could also have it in flak, or another wave pack where you don't have to like change any settings. And that's the method that I prefer and you're gonna be listening to this in its highest quality. So there's no reason not to have it. And it's pretty simple to install.
you're gonna have the Hero Collection mod, which actually gives you more variation of how you wanna play your main character. Stock, you have about three models to choose from, but with this one, you have more characters to choose from, including a Native American session, and you also have African American characters that you can pick too. So there is a little bit more variety, and while it doesn't really have that much to change the playing field, it is a nice way to actually be playing this. So, hey, options are good with this. NPC Armor Mod is the next one that I really love in this collection, which allows the NPC to equip the highest quality armor that's in their inventory. NPCs are kinda dumb, so it's nice to know that they have a little less dumb in them. So hey, you know. Thanks for doing the thing you should have done common sense wise. Some of the graphical mods have been very, very cool for this game, especially the Talking Heads mod made by Goat, um, sorry, Goat Boy. See, Fallout 2 was incredible because it has a lot of chat heads. Basically, when you talk to some NPC characters, you see these really nice chat heads and it kind of immerses you in the world, but Fallout 2 has none of that. So what it does, it adds its own brand new chat heads to talk with you and and they're animated very nicely and on top of that they're hiring voice actors to do some of the characters of this game so if you're kind of curious about doing some voice acting here hey it's not a bad idea i might try myself actually but it's a great way to add a little bit more integration and something that i think fallout 2 was very necessary in having there is a minor graphical overhaul by camus 5 and I am kind of a fan of this, but it's I think it's a little bit more optional for this kind of reason alone. It does change some graphical assets like let's say some of the furniture, some of the beds and shelves, and it makes it look a little bit more tidy. But the reason that I'm personally not a fan of this, not because it's done badly or anything, I just personally think that the Fallout is a messy world and to see kind of some uh, pieces of furniture, you know, looking a little bit too clean, at least in my perspective, is something I'm not a fan of. But hey, you know, maybe you have a different opinion on that. But I did want to include this just in case people are like, you know, how can I make it look slightly better? So it's not a bad way to do it if you want to. And a cool thing that I all mention is this. You could transfer your save from Fallout to original Windows XP systems or Windows 98, which is actually how I've been playing it. So for example, I've been playing Fallout 1 on my Windows 98 PC. I started it from there and made sure that I had a great time on there. When I needed to go on the go, I transferred whatever I need to from a USB to my modern computers. And because of Steam, that allows you to uh, trade some of the cloud saves it works perfectly. So I've had no problem with save corruption or anything like that. You can do that with Fallout 2. However, since you have restoration projects, just keep that in mind, whatever version you're playing Fallout, you have to have those mods installed as well. So you can't just transfer the original 1.02 without the restoration project, it has to all be the same playable version in order to transfer the save, if that makes sense. And there we go, that is the ultimate modding guide for Fallout 1 and 2. And I know not many people like these versions just because the control system is pretty archaic or the inventory is pretty cumbersome. But with these, I really think it just brings and bolsters the game to a better, enjoyable quality that I think a lot of people will enjoy. And I think, it deserves thanks to these incredible modders for making that happen. What do you guys think? How are you going to be playing Fallout? Do you just prefer the vanilla experience or do you think these mods just elevate it to a higher status? Let me know down in the comments below so we can have a great discussion. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you like other modding guide videos, check out right here if you want to check out my playlist. And also, thank you so much to these people right here for supporting the channel and just helping me make more content and making sure that it's good and it's concise. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys very soon. Take care.